Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all okay. I've come today to Jodrell Bank Discovery Centre in uh, Macclesfield in Cheshire and I'm meeting Martin, um, who's a guy I did another video with uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, I'll link a channel. Uh, I'll link his channel in the description below. Uh, it's Martin0401. Um, and we've come today to um, film a couple of videos, one of them being at Jodrell Bank and the other uh, is going to be at another location. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, have a quick look around Jodrell Bank, uh, maybe go in the Discovery Centre, see what's um, knocking about in there. And I'm just going to sort of talk a little bit about the Lovell Telescope that's at Jodrell Bank. It's really, really impressive structure. I'm sure uh, most people watching this will have seen it. And if you've not, stay tuned because it's, uh, it's a really, really uh, impressive piece of kit. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, drive into the site now. Okay, so we're out in the main telescope garden now at Jodrell Bank. Martin's over there. Um, you can see the, the big uh, telescope in the background. Um, it's absolutely massive. Fortunately, I don't think it's going to move today because um, they're doing some maintenance work on it. You can hear like grinders and stuff going on. And the, uh, the telescope's parked at the moment, which means when it's in the upright position like that, um, it's usually um, not receiving anything. Um, it's part for maintenance and I can hear all sorts of hammering going on up there so I don't think we're going to see it move today but you can get um, a really sort of good idea of the size of this thing it's absolutely huge um, you can see it runs runs on steel rail girders down the bottom there I'll show you through the fence you can see the rail girders at the bottom there they're just like normal railway girders there's actually a man down there doing some maintenance as well so I definitely don't think it's going to move Okay, so this site was called um, Nuffield Radio Astronomy uh, Laboratory from, I think, 1966 to 1999, um, and then it was renamed Jodrell Bank Centre for Astrophysics. Um, and it's run by the Manchester University and um, some other companies as well. And this observatory was set up uh, in 1945 by Sir Bernard Lavelle, who I'm sure you've heard of. Um, and he's actually the telescope was named after and he was an astronomer at the University of Manchester and the reason for him setting up this site was to um, investigate cosmic rays after the work he did on radar during the Second World War. So the main telescope at this observatory is the Lavelle telescope which you can see in the background. It was originally called Mark 1 um, and it's the third largest steerable telescope, uh, radio telescope in the world. Um, and it's this forms part of the uh, well it's the base of the um, Merlin network which it stands for um, multi-element radio linked um, interferometer network um, and it's a national facility run by the University of Manchester so there's other um, dishes around the country I think there's one in Cambridge there's one over there and there's one up at Pickmere um, in Cheshire 
and um, they form part of a, a network which all talks to each other and um, sort of collates information um, together uh, as a group. So this is the Mark 1 telescope as I say, it's now known as the Lavelle telescope. So this telescope um, was the largest uh, steerable dish radio telescope in the world uh, when it was completed in 1957. It's now the third largest. Um, it's been beaten by the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia in the United States and the Effelsberg Telescope in Germany. Um, just to give you an idea of the size of this, part of the gun turret mechanisms from two battleships, HMS Revenge and HMF, HMS Royal Sovereign, were used, well, were reused in the motor system for this telescope, um, which are the buildings you can see on the side. Um, and um, it runs um, on rails, which uh, you can see at the bottom there. Um, it actually runs on, on reused railway track. Um, so absolutely massive. In fact, if I get a shot of this guy uh, walking in front of it, it'll give you an idea of the actual size of this thing. So you can see at the moment the telescope's pointing upwards um, into the sky. Um, and as I said, it is parked and not being used because of maintenance. But um, when it's pointed towards the sky, a radio source, so the, Everything gives off a radio signal and stars and planets in space uh, and all sorts of things give off radio signals and some of them are really, really weak, um, really weak signals. So when a radio source um, arrives at the dish um, from the source, it's intercepted by the big bowl that you see on top um, and you can't really see it from here but inside the bowl there's like a tower with a focus box mounted on the top and here at that point um, the focal point and the reflector, a small aerial then picks up the waves and feeds them into a sensitive receiver that's in the bottom um, in the control centre of the dish. Um, so it's really, really um, sensitive. You'd think with something this size it'd be receiving big waves, but they're really um, small, uh, minute radio waves, really quiet, um, you know, and easily swamped by noise. So to combat noise, this is, um, you know, a mo no mobile phone zone. Um, so phones aren't allowed um, and the radio receivers kept at temperatures below absolute zero uh, in order to reduce um, interference from the radio receiver itself um, so it's really really um, sensitive um, I don't know how they cope with external noise from mobile phones towers things like that planes going over um, but the the lady at the control at the reception desk said that uh, mobile phones can interfere with work sort of two or three times a day or you know as little as once a week but and um, they said loads of valuable work and and information can be lost just by um, a mobile phone interfering with the signal so um, quite interesting stuff really how um, how these signals can be swamped by sort of interference and noise these work the same way um, as a radio telescope so the point on top um, is the focal point of this dish and the sounds are sort of um, brought together from the entirety of this dish into here into like a focal point so if you speak all this in there the other dish over there where Martin is you should be able to hear us so I remember Lucy's over there at the dish right Martin I'm at the dish can you hear me hello can you hear me that's that's mental <laughs> so you can see Martin over there now at the other dish he's what would you say Martin 40 feet away 50 feet yeah. So Martin's 50 feet away um, and we're talking to these dishes and we can hear each other just at like normal, um, sort of a, talking at a normal voice level. Else? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Just recite a poem or uh, I don't know any poems. Just say Mary, Mary, Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. I can't remember the rest. Oh, speak, speak Martin. Hang on. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that, that Mary went, the little lamb was sure to go. Well, you knew the words better than I did, but that's amazing. So a bit of a basic experiment there, but that's amazing. Like You can see how far away Martin is, and we could hear each other really well, so that uh, gives you an idea of how these dishes work. So that one there just amplifies sound, minute um, signals from space, from mainly from pulsars. Um, a guy in the Discovery Centre was telling us that this thing uh, mainly picks up pulsars, which are basically um, when stars explode, when stars reach the, exp at the end of their life, the implode, um, the centre implodes, the outer explodes, and it turns into. Um, I can't remember what he said it turns into, but basically, um, it, it, its mass goes to millions of times its um, its own weight. So, like a spoonful of it 
would weigh as much as Mount Everest, if that makes sense. And it ejects radiation and radio signals from each of its poles on its axis um, as it spins round, um, and that's what this listens out for. So they make really accurate clocks and they um, help us to understand Einstein's theory of something. It was way over my head, uh, but really interesting stuff. Uh, definitely worth a visit, and the staff here are really knowledgeable. So. Okay, so you can see some of the surface of the telescope now um, on the top and by the late 90s um, the surface added to the telescope in 1970 was corroding really badly and needed replacing so in 1999 um, a grant of over two million pounds was awarded to enable a galvanized steel surface to be installed on the top of the dish which is which is really good um, to see government funding like that um, so along with the surface of the dish being replaced, the galvanised steel surface, um, a new drive system was um, installed as well and railway track that it ran on was, was replaced. So when all this new surface was put in, um, after the last panel was laid, it was then coated with two coat epoxy paint to give it a really long life um, and it was brought back into the use uh, in autumn 2002. Uh, the mass of the telescope is 3,200 tonnes, uh, which is ridiculous, and the bowl itself weighs 1,500 tonnes. Diameter of the bowl is 76.2 metres and the collecting area uh, for the signals is 4,560 metres, square metres. Surface area of the bowl, 5,270 square metres and the amount of paint for three coats is 5,300 litres of paint, which is ridiculous. Maximum height above ground is 89 metres and the outer diameter of the railway track which goes round it is 107.5 metres. So, um, just to give you a bit of an idea of the scale and size of this thing, it's um, absolutely phenomenal. 